Hey everybody, welcome back. So I just want to start real quick with like two things that fucking piss me off. YouTube is one of them. And <laughs> and microphones are the other ones. So first I want to apologize. I said in the last video, I even showed it, I got a microphone, a little fucking a clip mic and stuff like that because my last like five videos, they sound fine before I upload them. And like they were a little lower than all my past videos, but um, when I uploaded them and stuff like that, and one of my friends said to me, he's like, how's it sound on your end? Because it's like really low. And I think it was like Cannibal Holocaust or something, I listened to it. And on a laptop, it sounds all right. Like it's just, it's, you could still hear it fine. Like it's audible at least. But then I went and checked it on my phone and like it's very low. So I was so pissed about that. I was oh come on, man. So like the last five videos and stuff, I even tried taking the first Child's Play one that I did and putting it through Vegas Pro and fucking raising the volume and messing with the audio and everything. And then it takes fucking like four or five hours to render a video in Vegas Pro. And then it turned out like just being barely a little louder. So I was like, fuck this dude, seriously, like, <laughs> anyone who follows this channel and seen videos of mine and stuff, they know, you should not underestimate me because I am not going back. That's like four hours worth of fucking me talking about movies, those last five videos. So there's no way I'm going back and re-recording those videos. So anyone who really, really wants to hear me yap and go on <laughs> about these movies that I did in the last few videos, I don't know what to tell you. Just plug in headphones if you're watching on a phone because it's low on, a f on phones for some reason and that's why I hate YouTube because they compress the shit out of everybody's videos when you upload them and it lowers the volume significantly so if there was an issue and I found out what the issue was it was just somehow my laptop mic like wasn't at 100% like it just like was cut in half or something like that and I didn't touch it, so I don't know how it just magically like decides what it wants to do at times. So, hey, lesson, lesson learned. You learn as you go along. Always check the mic volume before I uh, record yours. <laughs> but yeah, I hate YouTube, I hate microphones. But I did like three mic tests and stuff before you know, starting this video. So it should all be good now and moving forward. So apologies all around. For those last like five videos or so but all right let's jump into child's play 3 continuing the franchise 1991 this came out and directed by jack bender and this takes place eight years after the first film not well, the first film the last film child's play 2 and it actually kind of worked out in their favor and everything because i always say on here about continuity is a big thing for me and I didn't remember like how this time jump like factored into the later movies and like Bride of Chucky and from then on, but it actually like worked out, man. Like he made Bride of Chucky right in the right year because this is this takes place in 1997, 98, and that's right when Bride came out and the events of Bride of Chucky takes place one month after the events of this movie. So it just, Mancini, man, like I said, everything he touches turns into gold. And he's just a genius. So, I mean, he was able to make that work, like, with this whole time jump in this movie, even though this came out, like, nine months after Child's Play 2. And he was somehow still able to keep continuity with the time and everything, which is awesome. So, let's start with this movie. Like I said, this is my least favorite in the series. Like, definitely. I still love this movie. I adore everyone in the franchise, which I've said. But like I said in the last video, one has to be last on any list or you know fa franchises and stuff like that. And this has to be the one for me. You know that's in the last place. But with them cleaning up and rebuilding the factory and everything, and Chucky's blood falls into the vat of plaster, and like that's how he comes back to life. Like they make they start making new dolls and. The one his blood was made out of is what brings him back to life. I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> that's kind of stupid to me. Like, even Mancini has gone on record in interviews and said that this is his least favorite film in the franchise of all of them. 
and he said he was like running out of ideas and he was put on put it in like a lot of pressure was put on him after child's play 2 like he was writing this before child's play 2 even came out and you can tell you can tell that he was you know just running out of steam with ideas of where to take this and then luckily thankfully he uh you know he got rejuvenated with creativity with bride of chucky and onwards but yeah you can tell with some of the things in this movie that like he just was under a lot of pressure and just didn't know what he wanted to do and that's one of them like is the blood flowing into the plastic the fucking pool of plaster and that's what brings Chucky back to life like wouldn't there be a bunch of Chucky's like like in the, like cult and stuff like I don't know you can't make sense of it because <laughs> there's really no need to with these movies because they are awesome no matter what so Andy's 16 years old here now and he's in Kent Military Academy you know he's been bounced around from foster, foster home to foster home and now he's ending up in uh, this little military academy and we have the scenes again with like the company and everything and that it's been eight years and stuff since all the bad publicity with Andy and the killer doll and everything like that. And there's one line from like the woman and stuff where she says that they, the good guys have outsold their other toys two to one. That makes no sense to me. Like we've seen in these, the first two movies how insanely evil of a corporation this is man for everything they put out for these kids and stuff like that and just like preying on you know kids and stuff like that and just releasing all this shit through the good guy line good guy fucking sleeping pj sneakers and fucking cake mix like i was mentioned in the two last videos like and then the dolls and everything and we see these dolls all over the place like everyone in america <laughs> has these fucking dolls but it only outsold their other toys two to one like i want to see what the other toys were because they should be in like half the houses in the country two to one i guess more like a thousand to one <laughs> that fucking good guys outsold their other toys because they are fucking everywhere and everyone knows what good guy dolls are so there's no way it's just two to one they outsold everything else they did absolutely not uh, then chucky set all those toys off within the CEO's loft or whatever when he's playing golf and everything and he sets like 30 toys turns them on and stuff and they all start walking around and cars driving and all, all that shit and without being seen or heard or anything like that like that scene is so ridiculous <laughs> but it does have the awesome part with the whole um with the chucky with the chucky dolls with the uh, good guy dolls in this in the chairs and everything and them just saying hi my name is larry hi my name is paulie and then it just repeats back and forth and stuff and like i like to be hugged i like to be hugged and like that's awesome so that like counters the uh absolute insanity of <laughs> having to think that Chucky actually went around and turned on like 30, 40 different toys without being seen or heard or anything by the CEO guy. <laughs> and just the fact that he kills him with the yo-yo and like he's the CEO of this huge toy distributor and company and everything like that, that's cool. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. Kills him with a, strangles him with a fucking yo-yo. But how the fuck does Chucky know how to use a computer? Like, to look up where Andy is and find out that he's in the military academy and everything like that. Like, he's been trapped in the doll since 1988. Like, there, yeah, there were computers back then, but, like, this is 1998, 97, 98 or so that this has taken place. So he's been in the doll for the last 10 years. He, there's no way he knows how to work a computer. Like, besides from maybe, oh, you push buttons and things happen. Like, besides that, like, he's able to get into the records on this computer and search for Andy Barkley and find out where he is. Get the hell out of here, really? Like, <laughs> that's so fucking stupid that he knows how to use a computer as a doll. After he's been in a doll for all this time, and a lot of the time, the last, like, eight years and stuff, he was, he was dead. Like, he just came to life at the beginning of this movie, which was eight years after the second one, when he got melted and his head was blown apart and stuff. So he missed the whole, like, beginning of the computer craze and stuff, personal computers. So there's no way he knows how to work a computer. <laughs> like, absolutely not. The, uh, the scene with the barber, 
like shaving like the kid's head and then goes to and shaves Andy's head. This guy's way too into his job, man. Like like almost to a fucking like perverted like level. Like <laughs> he's shaving this kid's head and he's like, Oh yes, yes, like oh yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> While he's shaving this kid's head, like seriously, like this guy loves fucking cutting hair, man, like and shaving it off. Like this guy, there's something wrong with this guy. Like, and then they don't notice this. Like, they need to get a new barber, like immediately. Someone who's not like turned on by the process of shaving the heads of young men, like, <laughs> like that. That's such a weird scene with the way with that he just acts and like everything about him. Like, he's just so strange. Fucking Shelton, man probably the most annoying character in this whole franchise like by far this guy is such a dick and there is no way that Shelton has not gotten his ass severely beaten if not just straight up fucking murdered <laughs> by somebody at this academy in the past like there wasn't one person who said fuck you asshole like I'm not dealing with your shit and just like threw down with him and just completely knocked him out on his ass like never happened I find that so hard to believe like <laughs> even the fact that the girl and I forget her name but she's a real pretty girl too but it, she's the only one who stands up to him and says like I call it, you know, asshole she whispers what do you say I said you're an asshole sir and stuff like that <laughs> she's the only one who stands up to this guy but nobody else in the past just wanted to beat this guy to death or attempted to. I find that so hard to believe with how this character is, man. What an annoying character. Um, I love when Chucky pops out of the good guy uh, box with Tyler sitting there and he's looking at the box and everything and then Chucky just pops out and like scares the shit out of Tyler. But then like right after that initial like, whoa, like what's happening? He acts like this is like the hundredth dolly scene, like walking and talking and stuff like that. Like he's just like, wow, like, <laughs> like there's like no reaction at all from him. Like that this is out of the ordinary or this like shouldn't be happening. Like there's nothing like that. There's no reaction at all. Like he just immediately accepts that this doll is alive. And like, all right, cool. I'm like, <laughs> you're my new best friend and stuff. Like that. That's fucking ridiculous. Like, <laughs> that's so crazy, man. And then the whole little famous scene. Like everyone who's a fan of this franchise knows this this quote and everything. When Andy uh, says he's not good with guns, and Shelton's like, "Does this look like a gun? This is a rifle." And he has the guy come over, and this is my rifle. This is my gun. This one's for shooting, and this one's for fun. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great line, but he's, the guy who says it says it like in such a weird way and like he's not like emphatic about it or like puts any effort into like saying these lines like he just like goes like this is my rifle this is my gun this is like <laughs> he says it so weird every time I hear it from him it's it's just absolutely hysterical man <laughs> he's so funny the way he says that line that phrase and everything and then we have the garbage compactor kill when Chucky gets thrown into the back of the garbage truck and he's about to fucking get crushed and he's screaming and asking for help and this the guy gets out of the truck and goes in the back and stuff and starts looking around in the compactor and somehow this guy has this guy has like bad situational awareness man because like he didn't see this doll climb out the climb out of the fucking back of this truck this garbage truck I mean, yeah, he was digging around in the trash and stuff like that, but still, like, you see a fucking, you didn't see this little doll? It's not that little. Like, it's like the size of, like, it's like almost the size of Andy in the first two movies. So he's not like a tiny little doll, like, and you didn't see this climbing out of the truck, really? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I wish there was more gore in this movie. And in the first two, I mean, there's not a lot of gore or blood or anything like that, except like when Chucky's being, you know, ripped apart or shot or fucking everything that happens to him, basically. But like, I love that in Bride of Chucky onwards and stuff, they really up the ante on that. So I cannot wait to watch Bride of Chucky right after this because that is going to be so much fun. I love Bride of Chucky so much. It's near like the top of the list of the franchise for me. But awesome. Cannot wait. Uh, then... <laughs> 
<laughs> we get the whole awesome line from Chucky, man, when he f makes himself known to Andy finally and stuff. And Andy's like, like you, you can't kill me, you need me to transfer your soul. And he's like, nope, I got it covered already. And, and he knows it's Tyler. And he's like, you know, you're not going near Tyler. He's like, hey, Chucky's going to be a bro. I'm like, <laughs> that is such a great line. That's probably my favorite line from this movie. I'm like, that is so funny. And then you have the chicks putting lipstick and stuff all over Chucky's face and like making him look all pretty and everything. Like, <laughs> I would love to hear his inner dialogue and like his thoughts during that. And he's probably sitting there like, wait till I fucking <laughs> am able to get you guys alone later tonight because you are the first bitches I'm killing. Like, as soon as I can do it. If I could put the lipstick all over him, that's so funny. And then the guy has a fucking heart attack before Chucky can kill him. And we get that famous line that's in every movie ever that is so overused and it's like it's in every fucking movie. And I said this in the Hatchet franchise and stuff, but like it works in that franchise just because it's like a running gag through all four movies. So like it doesn't bother me in that. But the whole uh, Chucky, you know, like, he dies from the heart attack before he can kill him. And Chucky's, you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> It's funny coming out of Chucky's mouth with Brad Dorf and everything, but it's such an overused line, man. It's in every fucking movie, like, everything. And Andy goes, like, through two times the shit as usual in this movie. Like, usually he's just dealing with Chucky, the killer doll, trying to, like, fucking take his soul away, <laughs> like, get into his body. This movie, he has to deal with Chucky and fucking dickhead Shelton. So, like, he gets double the shit in this movie, like... As I said in the last one, I feel so bad for that kid. Especially in the last two, because, like, he's such an adorable little kid. Now he's older and stuff, but still, after everything he's been through, and now he has to go through just this dickhead alone. Uh, then Chucky coming back and everything, like, this kid's been through so much, man. Like, <laughs> I feel so bad for Andy in this whole franchise. Like, what a undeserved life that this guy this kid has had man and so like Tyler's whole reason for existing in this movie is just to have another like young kid right like that's the whole reason he's in this movie like for sure like from my perspective like it's the only reason that he's in this movie it's because they had Andy as a little kid in the first two and they needed another little kid in, in this one to like be like I don't know, like, even find, like, the fact that Chucky's alive, like, whimsical and stuff, and, like, be blown away by it, and trust him and stuff like that. Like, that's the whole reason that they wrote his character into this movie. But it still works, because I, li I really like Tyler. He's a cool little kid. And, um... The fucking barber, man. Again, like, fucking... I love the fucking line with him, with Chucky, where he goes, Presto, you're dead. <laughs> And then, like, the kid sees him. Uh, I forget his name. I wrote it down later. But uh, the guy comes in, and he sees Chucky moving after he kills the barber. And he's just like, boo. <laughs> and he runs away. Like, this is the movie where just, like, Chucky was really going over the top and everything with the comedy and everything. I mean, obviously, when, it comes, when we get to the next one, it's just full-on comedy and one-liners like crazy. But this movie is definitely like where it started getting really comedic with like the one-liners like Freddy Krueger and Nightmare on Elm Street has like those movies went along and everything how they just got more and more comedic and everything and just Freddy with the one-liners and stuff it was the same thing here with Chucky <clears throat> excuse me but it works because Chucky's hysterical and Dorif is a genius for voice act for voicing him and everything so no complaints I love the whole the whole military setting and everything for this movie. I don't know, it just doesn't work for me. And that's probably why this is my least favorite in the franchise. Like, it's just... Meh. Like, it's not like I hate it, it's not like... And I don't love it at all, like... Just the whole premise of this movie, of it taking place in this military academy that Andy's now sent to and everything like that, because bouncing around from foster care to foster care and stuff like that. I don't know. It's just not a fun setting for me for this movie. Like, it's really not. But, I don't know. We gotta take what we got, right? And then at least we got every other entry being amazing. 
I'm not saying I don't like this movie. Like I said at the beginning, I still adore this movie. It just doesn't work for me like the others do. Like, for sure. Kristen, that's her name. The, uh, the cute girl and stuff. That she uh, ends up, like, immediately having this little romance with Andy and everything like that. And then <laughs> Chucky sees them making out. And he's just like, man, I really need to get out of this body. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny man like I said like this is like the movie where we start getting real one-liners from Chucky and stuff and they're all hysterical like this is so good man I need to get out of his body so he can be fucking this girl like <laughs> well I mean that Latin line even doesn't make sense so when you think about it because he's not going into Andy like he's transferring into his plan is to transfer his soul into Tyler and she's definitely not fucking this little Tyler kid so <laughs> <laughs> None of that makes sense at all. Like, Chucky's not going to be fucking anybody in a little child's body and stuff. So, like, none of that line doesn't make sense now that I think about it. But it's still hysterical. I mean, the whole capture the flag thing and stuff. I mean, again, like I said, the military setting just doesn't work for me. So that whole thing with the capture the flag and them playing it and running around and everything. And they're all split up and stuff. Meh. Like, it doesn't really do anything for me but like again we get like Chuck and Brad Dorf man is just phenomenal in all of these movies just like a genius like in everything he does as I've said but like just the way that he does Chucky's voice and brings him to life man like his whole laugh and stuff his maniacal laughter like during the scene when they're when you after we replaced um you know, the fake bullets with live rounds and stuff, and, like, they're shooting at each other and, like, actually shooting them and stuff like that, like, and he's laughing like crazy, and we get that just iconic fucking Chucky cackle and everything. So good, man. Like, that is so good. Whithurst, that was the kid's name, who saw Chucky, like, killing the barber and stuff. Like, he couldn't say that he saw a doll kill a barber he was that much of a pussy, and they play him like that through the whole movie. He couldn't even say that, but yet he was able to get the courage up to jump on a live grenade and fucking get blown to pieces. Like, get the fuck out of here, really? Like, they really put that in there. Like, that's so ridiculous. That's so just insane. <laughs> like, of all the people, that kid is the one who sees a grenade get dropped on the ground and his like first instinct is oh no like I gotta save everybody and jump on top of it and kill himself but yet he was too afraid to just even say that he saw a doll alive and kill somebody like <laughs> that's so ridiculous man that's so crazy and the whole the whole carnival at the end and the devil's lair and stuff and then a little haunted like attra attraction and stuff like that awesome I love the ending to this movie. That's one thing I could say about the first three movies and pretty much all of these in the franchise, that the endings are just excellent. And like the settings for them and everything, like I said in the last movie, in the factory and stuff, the way that they ended it there. And then the ending here and this haunted little like ride and stuff in the carnival. Awesome. Like such a cool setting, like a, a great break from the whole military thing for me, like absolutely. But just another great ending scene and everything and a setting for the ending. And even though I said in the last video that I like Chucky's look in Child's Play 2 the best, you could really see how they were starting to get more and more advanced with Chucky and like controlling him and bringing him to life and stuff in this movie. Because you see him moving around and talking and everything a lot more in the last two films and this is only like nine months after child's play 2 so like just the advancement alone in chucky's movements and like everything how they controlled him absolutely awesome in this movie like they did such a good job and then as it keeps going on the franchise just better and better but like this movie compared to the first two absolutely awesome the way that they were controlling him and everything, the puppetry, and just like, they, they always use like, like little, like, live actors and stuff and costume for certain shots and stuff like that, but man, the way that they were bringing him to life in this movie, really, really good. And then we have the Grim Reaper, 
in the attraction and stuff that his hand comes down with the scythe and fucking just cuts Chucky's side of his face off and stuff. That's such a cool shot. That's so cool. And this part of his face just goes flying through the air and stuff. Awesome. So good. And then he tries, you know, putting himself into uh, Tyler and stuff. And he says the chant wrong. Now, I've said in the first movie and stuff how it's just ridiculous that this old voodoo chant and everything in some old language or foreign language, whatever, is just a foreign language throughout. But the second line is just the English phrase, like, give me the power I beg of you, <laughs> which is so weird. Like, the whole chant just can't be in voodoo. And in this one, it is. He doesn't say, give me the power I beg of you, is the second line. He says it like... 15 lines later, like, <laughs> when he's almost done with the chant. I was like, wait a minute, like, did they mess that up? Or is this like a new voodoo chant or like that we never heard before? And like, they had to replace the English phrase like near the end, like, <laughs> I don't know. That was just a fucking stupid little uh, thing I noticed. And then Andy gets uh, gun the gun and shoots his arm off, which looks great when his arm comes flying off and shot off and everything. Really, really cool. And then Chucky falling into the fan blades and stuff like that. Awesome. That is like probably up until this point in the series, my favorite like Chucky death. Because I can't really call it a death because he comes back over and over again. But awesome. He just falls in and just gets fucking chopped apart, man. His body parts are flying all over the place and stuff. Such a cool shot, such a cool scene, really, really cool. And then Andy's just arrested or taken into, you know, questioning or something at the end. And he says to uh, the girl, he's like, hey, don't worry, I've been through this before and stuff. So, like, I don't know what they're arresting him for. Like, for the killings of the people in the military academy or to just come to question him and bring him to the precinct. I don't know. Like, I don't know what happened to him after... He gets taken away at the end of this movie. And uh, that's it. Like, this is much shorter than the other ones because, like I said, this is my least favorite in the franchise by a decent margin. But still a great film. Still so much fun. We had so many great one-liners from Chucky that are just so memorable because Chucky's going to be a bro. <laughs> that's such a great line, man. That's so fucking funny. But, um... I'm going to continue now watching Bride and Seed and Curse and maybe I'll knock them all out by the morning or something because um, yeah, having that stomach bug earlier this week that fucked up my whole plans for the week because I was going to have this should have been done this series like tonight or like even before tonight like last night and then we'd have found footage Friday tonight but things don't work out the way you want them to just like the fucking sound issues with this these last few videos but Hopefully this is good and back up to par with the last, you know, all my past videos and stuff. And like I said, if the low volume bothers anybody, like if you're listening on a phone, because it sounds, it's definitely audible and fine on the laptop, just not as loud as the other, as the other videos. But um, plug headphones in or blast them through a speaker. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I don't know many people out there who wants to hear me talk about movies for fucking 30, 40 minutes straight, but... If you really want to see those videos and stuff and, the, you know, plug headphones in, that's what they made headphones for, is to hear things better. So, <laughs> alright, Bride of Chucky coming up in a few hours, and then uh, we'll continue from there. And anyone who's, you know, found footage, I know I, I, I have a decent amount of uh, found footage fans who uh, watch this channel from time to time and uh sorry about sound footage friday man if anything maybe i'll just switch it up to tomorrow tomorrow night or something and do some found footage tomorrow but all right guys i'll see you guys soon with brighter chucky